Is there anybody that's actually looking out for you and really going after these guys besides Rand Paul? I mean, he's relentless on it, and he's right. As we showed you in the special last night, Fauci is guilty as sin on not only the um, uh, gain of function and paying for that, but also for all of the cover-up, the phone calls and the meetings that happened to cover his butt right at the beginning of COVID is astounding. Rand Paul is joining us now. Hello, Senator. How are you? Good morning, Glenn. Thanks for having me. You bet. Um, So, you know, you've been on this for a while. Last night I explained and laid out the, the history of Fauci, all of the documentation, made the case. Uh, It's truly open and shut. Why isn't anybody else on this? Why isn't Fauci squirming? You know, it is kind of amazing, particularly that no one from the opposite side of the aisle seems to care at all about the dangerousness of this virus and that it might have come from the lab and in all likelihood did come from the lab. Not one Democrat is curious at all. You know, you would think that Democrats have at least some sensibilities about, you know, the danger of things. They tend to be the ones who want to regulate away things that could be dangerous in the workplace, but they don't seem to be caring about something that could kill millions and likely did kill millions of people. You know, this virus has a 1% mortality and killed 5 million people so far around the world. Can you imagine if the next one that comes out of the lab has 15% or 50% mortality? And they are doing experiments as we speak with viruses that have 50% mortality, and Fauci seems to have no problem with this. He says we weigh the risks versus the benefits of the research, and I come to, he comes down on the side that the risks are worth it. But there are some dissenting voices. I mean, in the Washington Post about a month ago, a professor from MIT, Kevin Esbelt, wrote that these are risks to civilization that yes. are not worth the gamble. That- so. That, that was the thing that really struck me um, as I was doing this special last night was, you know, these guys are making these decisions and all of humanity could be wiped out if they make a tragic error. This is not something that the elites should be the ones making the decision. We should all be involved in this decision. It, there's no bigger decision to make then should we uh, be playing around with things that don't exist necessarily in nature that have jumped to humans? Should we be playing around with these things, making that, so in case it jumps to uh, humans, we can, we can kill it with a, virus, with a, a vaccine? This is insanity, insanity, especially with arrogance coupled to it. And we're not involved in any of these decisions, none of us. Yeah, and I think the, the real danger here is that Fauci not only has a casual disregard for the science, but also for individual liberty. You combine the two, ignoring the science and then having no, no regard at all for individual liberty, and you have a really dangerous situation. But it's also dangerous because we've centralized the authority. And what I tell people all the time is, look, I have opinions on where the, where the virus came from. I have opinions on how to treat it. But they're my opinions, and you don't have to take them. It's through persuasion. If you agree with me, you can listen to my opinions. With Dr. Fauci, it's, it's not the same. He has opinions, but he wants you to be forced to do as he says. So it is the difference between coercion and freedom. And in freedom, there are many choices. It's, but the real danger is as we centralize authority – Ultimately, you get authoritarianism, and I think that's he could easily be a medical dictator if he were allowed to be. Oh, yeah. Um, the One of the things that um, we, uh, we found through our research, let me see if I can grab it here. I have a, um, I think it's a hundred and, yeah, here it is. It's like a 180-page uh, contract between the NIH and Moderna. Did, did you know that we are the co-owner of the vaccine from Moderna? Doesn't surprise me, but yeah. no, I don't know all the details of the contract. Okay, so the contract was, they started negotiating this contract with Moderna. The government said, we'll give you all the mRNA uh, stuff, 
and you try to do uh, make a vaccine for all the new coronaviruses. In 2015, right after Barrick and she made their first Frankenstein uh, COVID, uh, the NIH says, hey, we should get into bed and, and start making vaccines with Moderna. That contract was negotiated in 2015. Rand, they signed the contract on December 12th, 2019. That's a little odd, don't you think? Yeah, that they had already begun the negotiations in anticipation of it. And, and no, no, no. Several videos. But five, yeah. ye- five years or four years in advance, then they're not talking about it, and they rush to a signature on December twelfth. What did they know? Why, why the rush to the signature then? The other problem too with the government and Moderna owning is there's a huge stock of the vaccine now. And the current vaccine is not working very well. And in fact, what I would be doing, instead of saying let's rush a booster of the same old vaccine, I would be releasing the newest one, which is a Delta variant Correct. vaccine, which might go back to a 90 percent efficacy. This one may have only, you know, fairly soon it may only be a 30 percent efficacy, almost, you know, a crapshoot as far as even taking it. But the thing is, is that a Delta variant might be enough when, when the vaccine was effective in April and May of last year, it wasn't for lack of numbers that we didn't get to herd immunity. I thought we were very, very close in April and May. There were many doctors, Dr. McCary of Johns Hopkins, others saying they thought we were getting there. I thought we were close. We got down to less than 10,000 cases a day, and then it burst through because it developed resistance to the vaccine, basically. Mm-hmm. So unless you unless you have a better vaccine, you keep using the old one, they're just going to keep boosting it. And if, if it's if three is going to be mandatory, what about every month? Maybe you need a vaccine every week, Glenn. I mean, uh, what, what are we going to dictate to people over time with this? When in reality, probably what we need is a new vaccine each year like we get for influenza. Uh, but it still ought to be your choice to take it. And for the high-risk people, you know, it probably is a, is a reasonable thing to keep doing the boosters or to have a new one. But a new one, I think, would be much better than the booster of the old one. Let me let me ask you a question. Let me go back to the the federal government or the NIAID and NIH own the patent. Uh, they have they share the patent with Moderna. Um, you can look at this a couple of ways. Hey, good for the United States. They negotiated a deal, and so they're making money on this. Um, if we are making money. Um, you know, pay the taxpayer back. That'd be great. Get it for half price. That's great. I don't like the idea that we're in business like this. I don't know of another vaccine like this, an emergency vaccine. I mean, Salk didn't uh, patent his work. Uh, the flu vi- vaccine, it's open source all the time. This is the government forcing a vaccine that they co-own. And if we're if we are getting paid... Where's the money? Why hasn't this been made uh, public? And my theory is, and this is just a theory, Brand, you'll probably be able to get to the bottom of it, is if they are getting paid, the money is going to NIAID or NIH, and it's going to be funding more gain-of-function research, almost like a black ops. I think that's one possibility. We'll, we'll, we'll get a hold of the contract. Now that I know a little more about this, we'll actually uh, make some phone calls today and write some letters and see if we can get the contract. But I guess my, my first suspicion would be that this is government we're dealing with. They probably signed a contract where they co-own it, but profits only flow to Moderna. I can't imagine any of the money is going to – the government is so ineffective at trying to recoup costs on anything. Right. So you're right. If they are getting the money, probably it's under Fauci's control, and it just allows him to create more mischief. But I would say that there's a reasonable chance that there's no profit going to us, and it's all going to Moderna, and maybe we take the liability. If they lose money, we'll probably have to bail them out somehow. That's unbelievable. So example, unbelievable. So, for example, if there's about 100 million doses left and the variant comes out, that's why they're not wanting to release a variant probably, is they don't want it to compete economically with the one they've got out there. And so if you have a self-interest and you already own it, you know, you might not want the new vaccine to come out because it would compete with your old vaccine. This, this the companies are going to be hesitant on, on putting it forward, too, because they want to sell all their old one before they get uh, caught up in a new one. This is why the government doesn't get into business with people. 
You don't get into business like this because there's no police then. There's, when they're doing this, the, the government has no interest in exposing this and saying, hey, 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 you've got uh, a vaccine that you're pushing on everybody and it doesn't work. Uh, there's nobody to run to because the government is the police. They're the last stop. Right. You have to realize also that uh, the big uh, billion dollar companies that have been bailed out by this are the health insurance companies. So in normal times, if you have health insurance and if it covers your medications, uh, your vaccine would have been covered and your monoclonal antibodies and all of the different treatments. Instead, the government bought all this stuff and now the government's in charge of distributing it. But now you get into the conflict of interest. Well, what if deplorable people need more of it? What if Republicans need more of it? The government you know, has already indicated that uh, these people are using too much of it. And they've talked about limiting the supply for Florida and Texas. But uh, you can see how, how the real problems get in get into play when the government's in charge of the distribution and the decision making. Uh, Rand, you can get the contract. Uh, I can send it to you personally, or you can go just go. Anybody can go to blazetvspecial.com and all of the research from last night's show, including all every page of that contract. Uh, will be uh, sent to you. We, we want everybody to have copies of everything uh, so they know exactly what was going on. So we'll get that contract to you, or you can go there. What? Yeah, and if there are questions that are murky, what we can do is then address them directly. You know, where does the profit go? How's the profit divided? Because it may it may be murky from the contract. So we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it. Yeah. So we'll come up for it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rand Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. Bye-bye.